Hi, I'm Michael Neurock, and welcome to Trading in the Goldilocks Zone. In this lesson, we'll go over the Goldilocks Zone and how it can help you with your trading using the Trend Profiteer trading system. Trading in the Goldilocks Zone enables a trader to optimize the results by fostering discerning decisions with Profiteer trades based on price and the overall conditions of the market setup, regardless of whether it is a trend trade, a swing trade, a conservative trade, or an aggressive trade. Now, in this lesson, we'll cover quite a bit of theory. Um, it's always a great idea to attend the um, weekly webinars uh, or seek further uh, guidance in the uh, forum, as well as uh, you know going through the complete course. But I'm going to make it as simple as I can. And once we finish this lesson, you should have a better understanding of the Goldilocks zone and how it can uh, help you trading with uh, Profiteer trades. So basically the Goldilocks is, zone is a filtration of trade setups that ensures that the conditions are just right. Uh, you know, not too cold, not too hot. But in this case, it's about price. So um, what we want is conditions where they're just right with the price being not too close and not too far away from the inception of the trend. Uh, now, the inception of the trend, of course, is the moving average crossover. Uh, so traders can benefit from a potentially higher probability of positive outcomes, which, of course, is what we all want, as well as a trade that will likely move quicker and easier in the intended direction without unnecessary exposure to adversity. Doesn't, sound, doesn't that sound great? <laughs> um, of course, nothing is guaranteed in trading, but uh, you know the Goldilocks zone is a, a great uh, filter for these trade setups. Uh, and you'll see what I mean as we go through, through this lesson. So my hope is that you take this information and apply it to your trend profiteer trading. Remember, the trend profiteer system is extremely robust and the strategy is very powerful, but it helps to have the discerning eye of an experienced trader to know which signals are in the, in the ideal entry area. Using the Goldilocks zone filter can make your trade decisions even easier by instantly knowing whether the entry price falls in the sweet spot for entries. The good news is the... Um, Trend Profiteer, Trade Assistant, and the indi Indicator both display the Goldilocks zones for you in your trade setups if you want them to be displayed. But of course, with everything uh, with the Trend Profiteer system, I've uh, really focused on, on helping you guys understand what the system is doing and why, because uh, it's, it's my belief that... Uh, people make better traders if they understand the systems they're trading. Uh, so please note that any examples provided can be mirrored for trade setup rules in the opposite direction. So in other words, if I'm showing you an example, it also applies to the inverse. So if I'm showing you a buy example, uh, it's going to be the same, but the opposite for a sell example. But I will go over a couple of examples in this lesson. So when taking trades, you should do everything you can to ensure that conditions are as perfect as possible. Naturally, there is still no guarantee for the trade being a winner, but it does give you a better chance of the trade getting into positive territory quickly and easily so you can lock in profits, which is one of my mantras, uh, lock in profits. It's something that, um, that you should be focused on doing uh, just as a second nature, just as instinct. If you're taking a trend profiteer by trend trade, regardless of whether it's a conservative or aggressive type, you ideally want to see a trade set up with the following criteria to ensure you're trading in the Goldilocks zone. So let's have a look. The price, um, again, this is for a buy or a long trade. Um, the price needs to be a little above the seven period moving average, the fast moving average, or uh, as displayed in the trend profiteer system, the yellow moving average. If you're trading the one hour chart, you want to see price being ideally at least two or three pips above 
the 7MA, the fast moving average, on a buy trade. The price, uh, so the next thing is the price is not too far away from the moving average crossover. Uh, on the one hour chart, you typically don't want to see the price more than 20 to 30 pips uh, above the moving average crossover. Okay, so and I'll show you that uh, graphically, but essentially you want it to be a little bit above the fast moving average, but not too far away from the moving average crossover, the inception of the trend. So in summary, for a buy long tra trend trade, as I, as I was just saying, you want to see the price above the fast moving average, but not be more than a reasonable distance from the moving average crossover. This is what I call the Goldilocks zone, the zone where entry price is not too close and not too far, but just right. Okay, so note the Goldilocks zone is relative to different time frames and different pairs, which may typically require more or less pips. For example, a five pip or a fifteen pip, uh, sorry, five or a minute or fifteen minute time frame uh, is is going to uh, require less pips to be too far away from the crossover, and uh, you know you can you can have it set to uh, just one pip above or even uh, right on. Uh, the uh, the fast moving average uh, as far as the too close level and on the other side if you, if you're looking at four hour trades then uh, you can allow more pips for uh, that Goldilocks zone so in other words you want to enter trades in the area where price is showing momentum above the moving average crossover but where it is not moved too far beyond the moving average crossover that a trade entry becomes too risky due to a higher chance of experiencing price correction or stagnant consolidation uh, before any further moves in the intended direction if it does uh, in, in, uh, at all. So, you know, when you see a really big move on the charts, you know, one of two things can happen. It can continue, but the other thing is that it can reverse and uh, that, that spike that you saw, whether it was up or down, may have been news related, for example, and uh, very short term. So you want to be careful of, uh, of moves that are, that are out of proportion to the charts that you're trading. We'll take a look at some examples. Um, so history proves that price can react off moving averages uh, as it does off trend lines, uh, as it does off support levels and resistance levels. So if price is testing the MA, the moving average, in some cases it can break through rather than reacting off it. That's why when we're trading the Goldilocks zone in a buy trade, for example, we want to A, ignore trades where price is not significantly above the fast moving average as it suggests low momentum or possible retracement, and B, ignore trades that are too far above the moving average crossover as it implies a higher risk with higher stops required. So let's have a look at, us, at, at an example. And again, the best way is to, um, to, to, to join me in the, in the webinars and in the forum and of course in the chat room as well. And um, we can look at these on a case by case basis. But let's say that all the other criteria for this buy trade uh, was, was valid. Uh, here's an example of a trend profiteer trend trade buy setup where the price is below the uh, seven moving average, the yellow uh, moving average. So um, anywhere here, it's 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 below. It's not above. We want to see for a trend trade. We want to see that um, that price action above that moving average uh, because we're we're trading it uh, in the belief that it's going to continue to rise. So if it's at the time of the trend trade, uh, below the fast moving average of the yellow moving average, that's not a good sign. It's um, it's show, it, it's showing, uh, you know, a fatigue in the price and just not a willingness to move in the direction that we're expecting it or uh, to. So we want to avoid these trades because judging the setup on price action alone suggests that price is already showing a probability of failing without any momentum present to drive the price higher, which is, of course, what we want to see in a buy trade. Now, this is an example of a trend profiteer sell trend trade where the price closed above 
uh, the um, the fast moving average. So uh, like the buy example above this potential sell trade is not showing momentum with price indicating a, um, a willingness to fall. So even though the price did fall a little after entry and could have generated some pips profit the fall was very temporary and price then continued to move upwards soon after that so again we want to avoid these trades as on price action alone the price is not showing the momentum it needs uh, to offer us a better probability of uh, of uh, price falling lower so note even if all other filters are valid we want to be acutely aware of the price action uh, and use this as um, a powerful non-lagging indication of the probable direction and price in the very near future. So there are a couple of examples, and and I'm sure there's there's plenty of great ones that we can we can go over um, on um, on a webinar by webinar basis, and you know get it to the point where you're really uh, understanding exactly what you're looking for. Again, the trade assistant and the indicator uh, do display these on the charts, but it's great to have that you know working knowledge of it. So after a while, you'll start to easily recognize these movements easier and quicker. I can I consider price action to be the market's body language, and you can learn and predict a lot from just this element of trading. Uh, in summary, if, if price looks like it's struggling to move in the intended direction, or if price looks like the horse has already bolted, you know, a, a very large price move has already happened in the intended direction, it's best that you proceed with caution. So let's have a, a, a look at this. Uh, the following shows an example of a trend profiteer by trend trade where the price is too far above uh, and beyond the moving average crossover. And you can get some much bigger ones than this. But again, it depends on the time frame that you're looking at. Uh, but you can see in this, it was uh, the, the, the move up uh, closed way above the, um, uh, the um, moving average crossover. Uh, so in this case, the price of the entry is disproportionately above the moving average crossover, which on any time frame represents a genuine risk of either one, a correction in price, or uh, two, a period of consolidation without further uh, increase. And you can see that's exactly what happened uh, in this example as far as a, a correction or total reversal in price. So the higher the time frame, the more pips we can relatively accept as the too far distance of the price from the moving average crossover. Naturally, price can continue in the direction we are trading. However, pullbacks can cause bigger stops to fail and cause unnecessary stress. So it's important to trade cautiously. So I'm not saying to not take a, um, a valid trend trade where the move has been great. Uh, but if you are, be aware that if it's beyond your own uh, reasonable Goldilocks zone parameters of the too far distance away from the moving average crossover, then you should, uh, at, at, at the very least, uh, reduce your lot sizes. So if, because sometimes these trades do go well, there's no doubts in that. Uh, but again, the whole purpose of this Goldilocks zone is uh, another fil filter for these trade setups. So at the very least, reduce your uh, your uh, lot sizes. So uh, if it does, because your stop inherently, as far as the rules of the system go, needs to be uh, below the um, uh, slow moving average in a buy or above. Um, the slow moving average in a cell. Uh, in other words, just beyond the the the, uh, the moving average crossover. So your stop size is going to be bigger. Therefore, reduce your lot sizes. So if it does go bad, then you know, you're going to be less exposed. So if you're taking a trend profiteer sell or short trade, regardless of whether it's a conservative or aggressive trade, you ideally want to see the following. And this is the opposite of the buy trades that we've looked at uh, a the price is a little below the seven period moving average the yellow moving average so it's still the same yellow moving average or fast moving average but in this case we want to see price a little below that uh, that yellow moving average relevant to the time frame but say you're trading the one hour and you want um you, you want price to be at least one to two pips below just to show you know that momentum the willingness from the market price based uh solely on price based that it is uh 
you know, dropping. That's that's what you're you're uh, you're trading on. And B, the price is not too far away from the moving average crossover. Uh, so again, on the one hour chart, you typically don't want to see the price more than 20 to 30 pips below the moving average cro crossover, depending on the pair. So, you know, if you're looking at a yen cross, for example, on a one hour time frame, um, you may want to increase that Goldilocks zone to 40 or 50 pips because um, of, of the way the uh, the yen crosses are uh, are, are structured, you know, the, the, the 40 or 50 pips is uh, a, a reasonable distance on a one hour time frame and the yen cross, for example, as compared to say the euro or the pound, uh, you know, uh, versed against the US dollar. So the Goldilocks zone is relative to the time frame and pair, uh, for example, with yen pairs and exotics, uh, like the Euro Aussie, the Pound, Kiwi, the too far level on a four hour um, trade setup may be 100 pips or higher and still seem reasonable, it might be 150 pips. Um, whereas on, on a straight Euro, the U, EUR, USD, it, it, it might only be 50 pips. Uh, so, uh, and, and you can tell re really, but when you're looking at charts and on the time frames, by looking at the average movement of the pair on that time frame that you're trading, uh, as well as the stop used and the potential return. So there's a couple of things in combination here. Um, you want to have a good reward to risk ratio. So you want to have that really good potential reward. Um, and as, as, um, as uh, compared to your stop that, that you're using. But um, also you want to look at the average movement of that particular chart on that particular time frame um, to, to get a better uh, idea. The good news is again, the uh, trend profit test system displays it all and uh, you'll have some presets to, uh, to get you going um, in different groupings of, uh, of uh, currency pairs and time frames. Um, so, uh, here's an example of a trend trade sell uh, where price is close to low below the moving average crossover for this short time frame. So you can see, you know, it's a big move there um, from from here to the uh, the moving average crossover, and uh, depending on the time frame, uh, could be con certainly considered uh, excessive, too big, and therefore too risky to get into for concern of uh, correction and price. So remember the area between the minimum distance from the fast moving average and the maximum distance from the moving average crossover is the Goldilocks zone. Uh, so make sure you keep in mind of what all the six HTF or high time frame directional indicators are showing. Uh, because, uh, I, for example, I would be more flexible if four or five of the HTF directional indicators are pointing in the same direction. But if this were an aggressive trade type with only three of the HTF directional indicators pointing in the intended direction, I would be less willing to take the trade or I would take the trade with lower lot sizes and therefore uh, lower my risk. So, uh, you know, the reason for this is it could be a fake move engineered by market makers to drive price down to buy back at a better price or drive price up to sell back at a better price. Or it can si simply be erratic gyrations of, um, of the market at the time um, or a news based event that's that's temporary in nature. So you always want to proceed with caution. So finally, we get to some real uh, chart examples. And uh, again, um, I apologize that there's a fair bit of theory in this. However, it's important to be able to grasp these um, these conceptual ideas first um, before we, you know, take it to the next uh, to the next step. And that's where the webinars will will again come in very useful for um, for many of you. Uh, but the whole idea is uh, trading is a journey and being able to uh, to to go particularly from total newbie to professional trader is a, a journey that you must uh, travel through. And that's why, for example, the Trend Profiteer course is, um, is so big because it covers so many different things, which um, you know, I believe is obviously going to be to your benefit. Uh, so here we can see the, the Goldilocks zone uh, indicator display. Uh, you can you know change it to any color, but here we're looking for the price on the um, on the triggering of this 
uh, trade. This is a buy trend trade. The trend followers just turned uh, green. Um, the, the crossover has just occurred. We've got uh, two, four, four of the higher time frames pointing up. So it's a conservative um, uh, trend trade. Of course, an aggressive trend trade would take this as well uh, because you'll need three or more. So four here. All the other indicators are, are valid here. The RSI, the, um, the MACD, and the stochastic. So um, what we're looking for is we want to get into this trade if price closes from the previous bar above this this line here, which is our too close um, indicator. So we want to set it just a couple of pips above the uh, the yellow moving average. Uh, so we want to we would have taken any trade in here and it would have been executed as well if price was between this level and this level. So in other words, we're saying we don't want it to be lower than here than this level here. And we don't want it to be higher than here because let's say if it closed here, well, it, it may have continued, but that's the whole point. Uh, it, it may have um, experienced correction uh, or um, or stagnation before proceeding um, uh, higher, if at all it did. Uh, so that's a buy, uh, an example of a buy Goldilocks zone uh, set up. And you can see here we've got the settings in uh, in the software, so you can set. Uh, your too far and too close Goldilocks zone settings. Uh, too far is is the is setting trend too far from MAX, uh, M, uh, short for moving average crossover, and the too close this uh, this one here trend too close to MA, um, which of course is the uh, the fast MA. Uh, we can choose to display it or not. Uh, we we can have it not displayed but only alert us to those particular signals um, or we can choose to you know display one and not display the other whatever combination and of course we can uh, change the the colors of the um, of how they're displayed on the chart Alrighty, so here is a sell example for a goldilocks uh, trend trade zone and uh, again what we were looking for um, based on all of the criteria being um, uh, being validated, uh, we wanted the price to um, fall not higher than this uh, level here. We wanted it to be a certain distance away from the uh, fast moving average, and we didn't want the price to fall lower than this level here. So again, not too far, not too close, um, but you know, just right. So uh, that's what we're looking at for um, for a cell or an example for a cell Goldilocks zone. You can see here, same indicators, whether it's a buy or a sell, uh, you only have to put in the indicators um, once. So the swing trade also has a Goldilocks zone, but with swing trades, they're determined differently. So let's have a look. With these trades, we're focused with the following aspects of the trade setup. Uh, one, the entry should not be too far from the most recent uh, moving average or MA crossover, the inception of the current trend. Uh, and two, the move of the swing should not be too big. Uh, and it's, that's determined by the distance between the close of the bar uh, and the, uh, the close of the previous bar. Um, of course, all of these settings are uh, covered in depth in the um, in the user guide and the uh, quick reference guide, so make sure you you download those if you haven't already. Okay, so the concept of a swing within a trend trade is that the price will continue to move with the trend after a pullback has occurred that is immediately followed with a swing that is in line with the trend. So therefore, on a four-hour chart, uh, for example, which regularly experiences an overall trend move of 500 to 800 pips, the too far from uh, MA crossover amount could reasonably be 300 to 400 pips. Okay, in other words, you want to catch swings that are up to 400 pips away from the inception of the trend. Naturally, the further away the swing within trend setup is from the inception of the trend, the MA crossover, the more likely that the trend is about to end. Um, naturally, this too far amount should be based on the average trend move of the pair on the chosen time frame. 
Okay, so let's have a look. In, in addition, ideally, uh, actually, before we go on, one, the MACD histogram should be close to the zero line. Two, the shape that the MACD histogram makes preceding the signal bar should be gradual or parabolic in nature. And three, the number of inverse MACD histogram bars preceding the signal bar should be significant. Uh, so let's have a look. Of course, these are in the rules um, and you've got the cheat sheets in module five as well. Uh, so we go over this again and again, but um, it, you know, it's great to, in this case, look at, uh, at the actual criteria for the uh, Goldilocks zone for swing trades. So uh, just to sum it up, in other words, we're ideally looking for a market setup where one, the swing within the trend occurs not too far from the inception of the trend, the most recent MA crossover. So for example, let's say you've um, you've just, um, or we've just seen a, a buy trend trade um, and maybe it's on, doesn't matter what time frame it is, but let's say it's on a, on the one hour and uh, it's already been about 300 pips from the inception of the trend and we get a swing uh, trade uh, set up. Well, according to the swing trade Goldilocks zone, that may be, and we can set this of course, but that may be too far from the inception of the trend. You know, we only want to take swings that are within maybe a hundred pips. You know, we want to get a, uh, a, a move upward for that buy trade after the trend has already occurred, but also after a correction. That's the whole idea of the swing trade. Um, and of course these happen throughout the whole move, but how far is too far? That's what we need to establish. So one, the swing within the trend occurs not too far from the inception of the trend. Uh, the most uh, recent MA crossover uh, identifies the uh, inception of the most recent trend. Two, the size of the move signaling the swing is not too big. So if, if you see a, uh, a bar um, that closes and it's a valid swing trade, but the bar, uh, the close from the close of that bar to the close of the previous bar is like huge, uh, disproportionate to the uh, uh, to the average bar size on that particular time frame, that particular pair, then, you know, it could be ruling it out as well uh, because it's too big a move, likely to see another correction. Maybe the next swing might be, might be better, a uh, better opportunity. So, you know, again, this is about filtration of the trade setup. Uh, three, the MACD histogram bar is close to the zero line. And we'll go over some examples, but you don't want to see a swing occur necessarily that's that's quite far from the zero line because it reduces the probability of a swing upward um, because it infers that there's more correction to go. Uh, four, the shape that the MACD histogram is either A, very gradual, or B, like a bell or upside down bell for long trades. Uh, you could also refer to the shape as a parabolic curve. And we'll go over that as well so you can visually see it. And finally, five, there are at least two MACD histogram bars preceding the signal bar, but more inverse preceding bars are always a positive indicator um, for a change back in line with the intended direction after a long and slow correction. So in other words, you know, if you see four or five or six or seven histogram bars um, that are inverse to the swing direction that you want to trade, that's a good thing, you know. The it it's not always the case that the more the better, but it is um, it is a good sign when you can see quite a uh, quite a slow correction, um, and uh, you know that that swing has more probability of uh, of success in your intended direction. So here's an example of a buy swing trade that I would not take based just on the size of the swing is too big and the swing occurred too far from the inception of the trend move. So um, here's where the trend occurred. Uh, so that is the uh, the moving average crossover denoting the inception of the trend. There, there's a trend trade. Here's a swing trade. Here's a swing trade. Here's a swing trade. And there's another swing trade here. But um, two things. You know, the bar is, is quite big. You know, it's it's not exceptionally big, but it's quite big. And the distance from uh, the uh, the inception of the trend is, is too far. Uh, so, you know, I'm suggesting this as an example. Uh, again, we can look at real world examples uh, on the weekly webinars. But, 
you know, but basically that's the um, that's the concept of it. You don't want the swing uh, to be too far away from the inception of the trend, and you don't want to see too big a swing. Uh, it, just like with the trend trades, you don't want to see too big moves. Uh, you want to see big moves, but not too big. So these factors combined made the trade quite risky, although it may have succeeded. Price correction or consolidation was probable, and therefore, if I had taken the trade, again, I'm not telling you not to take trades, but you just need to be aware of certain things. Uh, so if I had not, if I had taken the trade, I would have kept uh, uh, reduced my my lot size traded. Okay, so I would have reduced my lot size traded, and I would be inclined to move stops to break even, as I always am, as soon as the trade got into reasonable profit, um, because you know when you're in profit you may as well lock it in. That way, if it goes against you, then um, you're going to make a few pips out, out of the uh, the trade, but it's always you know nice. It's always a, a good idea to play it safe. Um, and then make sure I lock in profits as soon as possible, just in case the trend is at the end or near the end of its move and is starting to bend. And we can never be certain that that's going to happen. And that's why I will say lock in profits. Uh, so here's an example of a sell trade that I would not have taken because the size of the swing is too big, the swing occurred too far away from the section of the trend, uh, and also the signal was given when the MACD histogram bar was too far above the zero line. So let's have a look. Um, so, uh, so, sorry, yeah, too far below the zero line. So just like the buy swing trade, the combination of these factors made the sell trade swing trade too risky uh, so you can see uh, there was a swing trade here okay taken here uh, and um, not too far this is the inception of the trend remember the crossover and down here um, again it depends on the time frame but these are just examples to give you a bit of an, uh, an, an idea how this works and so a bit too far too big a move uh, uh, and also the uh, MACD quite a bit below the zero line already, whereas you can see here it was a nice gradual um, correction uh, as can be viewed here, but displayed on the MACD as such. And then when we did get the swing down, this red histogram bar signaling that move down, um, we, uh, you know, it was closer to the zero line. Okay, that's the important thing here. You want to take swings when they're close to the zero line. Uh, and the further they, they are away from the zero line, uh, and you will see this from time to time, the riskier uh, they are because you know the move has already happened, so less likely for the move to continue to happen. So um, notice that the price consolidated sideways and did not fall any further. Uh, if I had taken the trade, Again, I would have kept my stop loss tight, my lot size is small, and I would make sure that stops are moved to break even as soon as the trade got into profit. Uh, I may have ended up making a few pips, but the risk was not worth the possible reward. Uh, you know, again, trading is all about risk and managing risk um, and being able to seize opportunities, but do it in the most uh, intelligent way possible. Uh, hence uh, Goldilocks zone as uh, another great filter to uh, you know in trading you will you will learn if you haven't learned already that you'll say and you should be saying no to trade setups more than you say yes um, so we'll go over that in more depth in a, uh, another time so a note only trend trade Goldilocks zones are displayed on the charts um, swing within trends do not display uh, the Goldilocks zone on the charts. There's just a limit to how much you can put on the charts. And personally, uh, when I'm when I'm trading, I will after that um, setup has occurred, um, I will you know go back and and clear up my charts by deleting those uh, those deletable uh, indicators just to keep my charts clean. Um, but you should be able to. Again, the good news is Trend Profiteer. Uh, uh, trade assistant and indicator will alert you to these setups um, but if they are beyond your Goldilocks zone criteria for those swing trades as well as the trend trades um, the uh, the trades won't be uh, won't be executed so it's a good safety check uh, for your trading so many trades of the trend profiteer trading system will go well 
Um, and I, I've got enough experience to be able to say that uh, regardless of whether the price is within the Goldilocks zone, uh, particularly if you give the room, uh, the trade room to breathe. Um, so the, the, they will go, they will go well, but you know, it, it, it's nice to have another indicator to be able to, um, you know, to assist your, uh, your trading, uh, filtration and your ability to say no, uh, more than, uh, than you say yes to trade setups, because there's always another trade opportunity. It's just a matter of taking the right ones, the good ones. Uh, so, uh, uh, trading is all about optimizing your trade entries so you place yourself in a winning scenario most of the time. Minimizing your risk and maximizing your rewards uh, also plays a vital role with the outcome of your capital's bottom line. We'll go over that in more depth. But, you know, it's all about trade selection and uh, picking the picking the good ones. So uh, if you take a moment before entering a trade to confirm whether the price is in the Goldilocks zone, even if you have the settings liberally placed, you know, does it look like it's too close to the fast moving average? Does it look like it's too far away from uh, from the moving average crossover or uh, for, for trend trades and for swing trades? Is the move just too big? Um, similar to the to the trend trades, and is it too far away from that inception uh, in the trend? And um, I'm confident that that you'll reap the rewards of a higher win rate and greater pips generated if you do that. So even though Trend Profiteer is an excellent and robust trading system, and some entries uh, some entries just aren't meant to be taken, and it's important to accept this fundamental fact of trading. So. Um, I hope that uh, that you're able to get something out of that. Um, of course, uh, go through the examples, go through the cheat sheets, make sure that you go through all of the trading. Uh, there's more details uh, listed in both the user guide and the quick reference guides of the trade assistant and the indicator. And of course, uh, the, we, we have the forum there uh, for, uh, for our members, uh, the chat room, and uh, the webinar. So make sure that you participate, ask questions, and um, and I'm delighted to uh, to 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 play this uh, this role in your journey. Till next time, good trading, live well, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.